Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Hadlow this morning, depending on your numbering system. This is either the fourth Sunday of Easter or the third Sunday after Easter. But whichever Sunday it is, you're very welcome to be here. Just a quick check for those who are worshipping at home on Zoom this morning. Can you hear me and see me all right? Thumbs up. Uh, and we are being recorded, so don't see anything you don't want to be seen on YouTube. And just a couple of quick notices this morning. Uh, 11.30 today after today's service, we have the annual parochial church meeting. Words intended to set any heart racing with joy and excitement, I'm sure. But it's an important part of the uh, church life as we re-elect uh, church wardens, PCC members, uh, and set the direction of travel for 2021. So the meeting will take place here straight after the service, but also on Zoom. Uh, and I don't mind whether you stay for the meeting here or whether you go home and log back in or whether you um, vote from Zoom, a matter of the you. You may have noticed a few kneelers appealing, appearing on the seats in front of you. They're on the end of the rows going forward. And these aren't just random kneelers taken out of the occasional vestry and put back out again. These are the ones which have been restored and repaired by Christine. So a huge thank you to Christine for doing that. A huge amount of work, and you're very welcome to take some of the inserts that have come out of that. Um, they will be reappearing as Christine does them, but obviously it's a Herculean task to go through that massive pile that is still in there. Uh, so if anyone would like to volunteer to help Christine with um, repairing them over time, you'd be very welcome to do so. And I'm sure if you're not confident in knowing what to do, I'm sure Christine would give you full training. But it'd be a great thing to do to get them restored and back out in church. And there was one other final notice, or was that it? That may have been it. Oh yes, brass cleaning. Um, some of our brass cleaners um, have actually chosen to, to retire, to step back a bit from that task. Um, but nonetheless, we still like the uh, brass to be shiny and clean in church. So that's something you could help with and would like to volunteer for. Um, do please uh, put your name forward, be gratefully received. And again, if needed, all training will be given. We'd like to keep the church sparkly and clean. Unless the church wardens have any other notices, I think that's all we have. And so we meet on this fourth Sunday of Easter, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so let's prepare our hearts and minds to enter into God's presence this morning, by praying together. Almighty God, 
to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. And so we take a moment of quietness to bring into God's presence those times this week we fail to live up to his calling on our lives. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we're able, let's stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Do you please be seated for our first reading. The reading is taken from Acts so maybe, chapter 4. Could you stand in front of that microphone as well so they can hear you on Zoom? Sorry. Thank you. Chapter 4, um, Peter and John before the council. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel 
that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Do you please be seated, thank you. And so may I speak this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Nearly every week I start my sermon that way, seeking to ground my thinking, my writing, and ultimately my speaking in the name of God. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Names are important and names are powerful. The name by which you are known and how others use it can speak volumes about relationships. If someone you don't know well changes your name without consent, perhaps they shorten a Stephen to a Steve or a Vivian to a Viv, then not only can it cause annoyance, but it can also feel as though that person has become over familiar, perhaps trying to exert informal power. One of the redeeming features about being called Paul is that it's not an easy name either to shorten or to lengthen. Though I was called Pablo for a while when I lived in York many years ago. I guess now that could be Padre Pablo. Attractive, but no, honestly. When parents shout, or even more scarily, when parents say your full given name, including all your middle names, then you know you are in trouble. People in close relationships may use all sorts of nicknames for each other, which may not be known or used by anyone else, which reinforce that relationship, that sense of intimacy. And people who don't like each other or who wish to be deliberately unkind to each other may call each other horrible names. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. I think we all know that's pretty untrue. And people with depression, or self-esteem issues may call themselves all sorts of bad names, which can change the way they think about themselves. 
But when we think lowly of ourselves and give ourselves demeaning names, remember always that this is not how God sees us. He knows our real name. And I'll come back to that in a moment. The importance and the power of names runs like a golden thread from the beginning to the end of the Bible. Let me just highlight just a few. At the very beginning, when God create, called creation into being, he also named that which he created. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. The act of naming creation, in a sense, completed creation. When Abraham entered into a new covenant with God at the age of 99, an age when I suspect most of us have got fairly used to our given names, God changed his name to Abraham. No longer will you be called Abraham, your name will be Abraham, for I've made you a father of many nations. Many monks and nuns, when they take religious vows, also change their name at the same time. I once stayed in a monastery and sat next to someone called St. John of the Cross, which felt a bit intimidating at first, but he was jolly nice, I can assure you. When Moses was called by name from the burning bush and sent to rescue his people from slavery, Moses asked the name of the one who was sending him. Of course, the answer is, I am who I am or I will be what I will be. God's name is pure beingness, pure becomingness. And when God, I am who I am, later gave the Ten Commandments to that same Moses, the fourth commandment was that, was that his people should not misuse the name of God. For the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. And in response to this commandment, many Jews will not write or even speak the name of God for fear of even accidentally misusing it, and will often refer to God simply as Hashem, which means the name. I don't know about you, but when I hear people using the name Jesus Christ as an exclamation or a swear word, it really actually hurts me. I feel it in my heart. It's misusing the name of God, but it's also misusing the name of someone that I love and follow. And I would certainly hope that no practicing Christian would even be able to misuse the name of Jesus in that way. When God called the boy Samuel to be a prophet, he called him distinctly by name as he'd called Moses before him. And as we heard on Easter day, when Jesus wanted Mary Magdalene to recognize him following the resurrection, he simply said her name. Although God calls us in many and varied ways, he's also capable of simply calling us by name. If we're brave enough to approach the burning bush, willing to seek the counsel of others wiser than us, or simply take the moment to wipe the tears from our eyes or metaphorically unblock our ears, we may recognize and respond to the one who calls us by name. When John the Baptist was conceived, his father Zachariah was struck dumb and was not able to speak again until he confirmed that his name is John. Having started in Genesis, the theme of the power of names both for us and for God goes all the way to the book of Revelation. In verse 2, chapter, sorry, chapter 2, verse 17, it says, To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Doubtless a mysterious verse, but one that suggests to me that our true identity, our eternal name, known only to God, and that the act of creation in us will be completed on the other side of life when God gives to those who've won through that white stone with our real and eternal name written on it. And at the very end of Revelation, in chapter 22, in the new heaven and the new earth, we're told of God's people that they will see his face, God's face, and his name, God's name, will be on their foreheads. There's a beautiful circularity here. The people of God both receive a new name from him, which is their true identity, but ultimately they are known not by wearing their own name, but because they wear God's name. This is the opposite of misusing God's name. It's being known as his people by making his name into our name. And then, of course, last, but by no means least, there is the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, king of glory now. I do love that hymn. But like many hymns, it's based in scripture. In this case, Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. 
Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is the name above all names. Now, although I don't bow my knee every time the name of Jesus is mentioned, you may have noticed that I often bow my head during the liturgy and that those who wear berettas to worship will often doff their hats at that point. This is no mere affectation or empty religiosity on my part at least, but it comes from the same heart that's hurt when Jesus' name is misused. It's a heart which recognizes the name of Jesus as the name of my friend, my brother, my judge, my king of kings and my God. How could we be unmoved by that name? The disciples were asked, by what power or by what name did you do this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God has raised from the dead. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. I do wonder whether in this age of enforced uh, informality perhaps we've forgotten the power and the importance of names perhaps we should relearn to think about the names we use for other people the names we use for ourselves the way in which we use god's name and remember that we are all part of god's flock and that the good shepherd calls us each by name and the name of the good shepherd is jesus christ of nazareth and there is no other name by which we must be saved Oh, Amen. So let's stand and affirm that faith in the words of the God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we sit or kneel to pray. Let us pray. A verse from Zephaniah, chapter 3. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer as your children with our prayers of thanksgiving and supplication. Gracious God, we thank you for the world you have created for us. Forgive us when we mar your creation. Give all the nations of the world a desire to work together to improve the problems of global warming. 
and how it is starting to affect our planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace in your world as we remember the places where there is tension and fighting, where people live in fear of what each day may bring, where people are starving as in Yemen and parts of Africa, where people become refugees fleeing danger and seeking safety, and where ruling parties seek control by violent means. Lord, we know that you can work miracles and change hearts that do not look for peace and just rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you understand the secrets of every heart. Strengthen and sustain those who know the sorrow of bereavement. We pray at this time for Her Majesty the Queen and other members of the royal family as they mourn the death of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We think too of those in our own community as we give thanks for the life of Rodney Manel on the first anniversary of his death. And remember too, those from our Book of Remembrance, the anniversaries of whose death are this week. John Joseph Barden and Natalie Vaughan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving Lord, who has brought healing to many, hear us as we pray to you for those whom we know to be in need of our prayers, that they may feel your love for them at this time. We pray by name for Rob, Tony and his wife, Anne-Marie, Judith, Kathy, Anne, Joyce, Morris, Andrea, and Joyce and Rob. And we also have a moment of silence to bring to you the needs of those known only to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our own community and pray especially this week for all who live in Hadlow Park and Valley Drive. We thank you that we live in a beautiful area with the countryside coming to life again after the winter. For the trees and flowers, lambs in the fields and the warmer weather. For friends and relations we can begin to see more of and activities we can take part in. As the coronavirus recedes in this country, we pray for those parts of the world still suffering badly and thank you for vaccines helping to keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our church community here for those involved in ministry, administration, in practical ways, and for all those who pray that the Lord's work may be done here, as we are all part of the body of Christ. We particularly bring to you today the business of our annual parochial church meeting, giving thanks for all that has taken place in spite of the constraints caused by the pandemic and we ask too for your guidance in the future. We thank you for the work of some of those we as a church seek to support and pray for the Delhi Brotherhood, Mission Aviation Fellowship and the Children's Society. And we remember too our link with Kibakwe and pray for the mission of the church there and for their people. The Lord your God is with you. 
He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand for all the peace. <laughs> The risen Christ came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And the Lord is with you. Let offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Peace be all on Zoom. Peace be with you, everyone on Zoom. Father, let me a fine and some offer tree in for. and Lord Jesus Christ we believe you and all we have heard is true when you break bread may we recognize you as the fire that burns within that we may bring light to your world Amen, Amen. The Lord be with you Amen. Lift up your hearts Let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread, and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised, he broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <coughs> So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. So we sit or kneel to pray. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Amen.
we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same lord whose nature is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son jesus christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us amen and a prayer for those not receiving today send your holy spirit upon us that those separated by distance we may still through faith be partakers in the benefits of christ's offering of his body and his blood this we ask through the same jesus christ our savior amen and so draw near with faith receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So I shall commune the choir first, and then come back, and whilst they sing for us, I shall come to the front, and then please follow the instructions of the church wardens to come down.
Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, 
and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Though we can't sing our closing hymn, let's get our legs working by standing to hear our closing hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Victory. Thank you, choir. One day soon we'll be able to sing again, I hope and pray. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's quite a long time, about 35 minutes until the APCM. So what I suggest you do is perhaps go and have a stretch your legs, take a comfort break, and then perhaps come back and reconvene in time for the, um, time for the meeting if you're coming in. I shall anyway go out and say goodbye to those who are going out and then we can have a meeting at 11.30. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.
Bye, everybody.